this month in the Rogers Report, we are coming to you from the William T. Jerome Library. Dr. Rogers, you don't have to be quiet. It's not that kind of library. Welcome to this month's Rogers Report. So Dean Bouchon, tell me a little bit more about the history of uh, this building. I think the transition from McFall to this building was probably pretty massive for the campus because in McFall you had to get your books paged, you couldn't make any noise, and then this building had a very expansive eight-story structure. Now it's an area where you can talk, you can collaborate, spread out all over the tables with books and computers. There's not just one way to study anymore. There is a lot to see in this library, it's the, the massive collections, and we only have three minutes to see it all. So we were gonna go through a blitz in the William T. Jerome Library. My understanding is popular culture is pretty popular here at Bowling Green. You know, we are the home of popular culture <laughs> studies. Ray Brown uh, is said to have coined the term uh, back mm -hmm. in the 1960s. We became one of the first collections of popular culture materials like uh, comic books, popular fiction in an academic library. I see it as part of explaining the way in which Americans lived during the 20th century and up through today. As a university, Bowling Green State University, a public university, yes. acting in the public interest, creating public good, a part of that is helping our public, the American public, understand our history. It's going to be an important part of understanding America going forward. So this is a collection of oil paintings done by the artist Frank Kaling. And each of these oil paintings, uh, there are about 150 of them, became Harlequin romance novel covers. This is a completely unique collection that no one else has. Yeah, so we have uh, an original copy of Mr. Spock's Music from Outer Space, which includes some of, some of his greatest hits, including uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Earth, the theme from Star Trek, and uh, a visit to a sad planet. So do we still have that large card catalog collection no. that we used to have here? No, we, we do not use a card catalog anymore. So do you miss the card catalog? Not really, to tell you the truth. Okay, I guess automation <laughs> and technology has, has had impact everywhere. So just today, you need help with accounting, biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, just to name a few, how many uh, students and visitors do you have to this library per year? Um, as far as the gate count, where people walk in the building, over 500,000. Wow. Okay, let's take a look at some of these spaces. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you like about this space? I'd have to say mostly the people. <laughs> I think it's great. Everybody's so sweet. You're doing some of the academic coaching? Yes, I am one of their tutors for anatomy. I like seeing their progress, and when they come back with positive feedback or negative feedback, helps me get better. For the most part, we work as a group to provide tutoring services for students if they have questions with software, but we also are just a really great resource for anyone that comes by the Collab Lab. So right behind me are actually our 3D printers. In the back, we also have a laser engraver, so we have a lot of students that will do engraving in wood and acrylic. We also have lots of laptops and Mac computers that have a whole bunch of software on them for students to use. So it's actually a really great learning space that we have, so it kind of goes along really well with the library. This has been a successful visit to the library. They even have books here. I am uh, honored that you uh, joined us. We'll see you next month on the Rogers Report.